Welcome back everyone to Wellstopia. I took a little bit into the nether and it looks like that Stina Rose is turning her portal area into a little bit of a hub and that means that I am going to need to move my tunnel a little bit because it is currently a little bit conspicuous shall we say so it is time to take down my tunnel and I hope she has some plans for the floor that's not going to include the spawning of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pigmen because I don't want this to be as populous as a pigman farm when it's done and that is done I took out the tunnel all the way down here slightly inside of the circle that she is creating here so what I'll do is first I'll find out how far the circle is actually going and I'll probably scoot the tunnel a little bit this way so that I'm coming into the center of the circle but that's going to be done after I'm 100% sure exactly where her circle is <sighs> now I can get to the real stuff in my episode. Then again, maybe I will never get to what I was planning to do today because I decided to take a little time to finally finish off the North Tunnel. Exit 135 Cocoa Butter, the last exit end of the line almost twice as long as the east tunnel and this right here is cocoa butter's responsibility since this is something that he built and of course it branches off so it's much like the other branches and of course it's in a magma spawner area okay well Finally done. Now I can get back to my base. On my way back though, I should note that I have finished moving this. And this aligns with this pillar right here, which is the center of this circle. I originally thought it was supposed to be the nether portal, but nope. This little pillar, which is a ladder up to the roof of the world, is the official center of the circle so that is what I shifted my tunnel to line up with and hopefully this will blend in with the rest that is being done there when I do that I might of course do some adjustments to exactly how it interfaces because this looks a little abrupt at the moment but maybe it'll look a lot nicer once I know exactly what pattern Stina Rose is planning for the hub. I have finally managed to make it back and I added a little bit of a frame here. Actually perhaps that would I think frame it a little bit better. There we go. We have a little bit of a frame for our fire area. Not much of a frame there, but a little bit of one there. And the wheat has grown. Yay! So that looks nice and full. And here's the winter bit. I have some little ivory there to frame that. And of course, the water one's already pretty well framed. So that leaves this thing. Now I'm pretty tightly stacked against it, so I won't be able to do any sort of super sophisticated spider handling mechanism here though I think I should swap in steps here so I could go down a little bit let's see how that works I push the stairs here back a couple of steps to give myself a little bit of room because the idea here is to put stairs here and here with a cobblestone fence here so I can get through so 
I can get through here, but supposedly these fighters will not be able to. And I want to use that as my defense here as I'm fighting and killing off the spiders. I'll put that this way. Now the question is how well I'm able to do everything here. In theory, if I had an ideal position, I would dig a trench here, they could draw, fall into the trench, climb up towards me, and I could kill them that way. But seeing the small confined space, I want to see what all I will need to do. Now, I suspect they may try to climb those walls, but I'd like to do an experiment to see whether or not they do climb walls all over the place. And here we go, here we go, and up here. Oops. Okay, so now I'm here, and I'm hoping that they see me and come towards me. And he can easily get over that. Okay. Of course, he climbs the wall over there. So if I drop a sign here, drop a sign here, will that discourage them from climbing any? Now, that might be something that only helps if it's a little bit above. So let's draw a second layer of sign there. Okay, we'll see if that does anything. Now what happens when this spider comes towards me? He easily comes over me. All right, so the that whole bit does absolutely nothing. So I might as well just set up a defensive perimeter and not worry about it. Yeah. He has absolutely no trouble whatsoever getting over there. So those signs are doing less than nothing. All right, let me just grab that. So, that does nothing. Hmm. What the? I, I've never heard of skeletons riding spiders before. That was a new one. <laughs> oh. All right. That was weird. This skeleton jockey thing certainly tells me that trying anything but a sophisticated spider farm is just going to get me shot. So therefore, I'll just go with the original idea of simulating the war against the minions of Voloth and an, an occasional help from a skeleton, apparently. And what I'll do is I'll just have a single torch here, which seems to be sufficient to turn everything on and off. And I will fight my battle a while here. Yes, it's not going to be optimal. It's not going to be a super fast one. It's going to take me a little bit extra with the sword and all that stuff. Since I'm not going to be one-shotting them. But it should get me plenty of spider eyes and the like. And I think simulating the battle is my primary concern here. It, it, yeah, it is going to be a battle. Yoo-hoo, skeleton! Not <laughs> skeleton! I don't want... No, 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 skip the skeleton part! I, I I, can't do just with the spiders enough. Just the spiders is enough. It's plenty enough for me. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. Here's a Temple of Elemental Pine. Has its war against the minions of Loth. And I will get my spiders here. And probably a couple of hits. Because... I'm not very efficient at this. This might also improve my combat a little because I can perhaps get some combat training because, yeah, uh, based on how long it takes me to kill these spiders, I'm going to need it. I think it helps a great deal that I'm within range of the protection beacon that's upstairs. I wasn't thinking about that when I built the beacon, but I think its current setting is a very nice synergy for this. So, yes. I'm not exactly using this optimally. I'll probably make a real spider farm when I finally find a 
spawner elsewhere in there because I'm pretty sure that there are some cave spider spawners below here. I mean, last season I had seven of them at my base. I'm surely going to find at least one down under here. And believe me, I would not be doing this if this were a cave spider spawner. Definitely not. Well, unless I had some protection against poison, at least. But, I think that's enough for Spider Sling today. I got myself some nice amounts of string, and I got myself some spider eyes. And I think that turns it off uh, nice and well. So I should be set. I moved back the last torch before the room. I moved the torch back slightly, and this has increased the spawn rate, so therefore I'm getting a few more spiders. Obviously still not a grand efficient farm, but as I said, this is designed as much to be a test of battle as it is to be a farm. And I think that one torch will light everything up so that everything is off. I just take that one torch and turn it back on and everything should be fine. With that slightly unusual spider farm done, it's time for us to start on what the original module calls the pillared room, but I like to call it the harpy room, so you could guess what we find in there. We find, of course, harpies all over the place in there and they are roosted way up high the module says that the ceiling is 40 feet ahead so that would be 13 blocks to get all the way up to the top now 13 blocks is a bit high i have to say and it might not even be capable of doing it because that might go up to the ground. So therefore, I'm just going to make this about six or seven blocks high. I think we'll do on this matter. Essentially, as high as I can reasonably make it and include pillars there. But the question is, what am I going to do with this room? Now, what I would really like to do here is... To grow chorus fruit in here because I do want to make some sort of use for each of the rooms because a lot of the rooms that they have in here let's face it are not being used you have all these big rooms that are old storage rooms that aren't being used or anything like that now of course for the storage room I decide all right I'll turn th that into something useful and some of them are going to probably be mainly decorative or something like this but I'll turn some of them into bedrooms like that guard room that I turn into my main bedroom. So I have all sorts of things I'll be doing with those things. But I thought that on this level, one of the things I could do is to build various farms. I could have one room where I'll have a pumpkin farm, another room where I will have a melon farm, a wheat farm, and all of that stuff. And here, if I can get a high enough ceiling, it might be a good place to have a coarse farm. Now, I am going to have to get some coarse fruit in order to... Actually, not coarse fruit. I need to get coarse flowers in order to get that to work. So that will be a little bit of a challenge on that matter. That may involve uh, heading into the end, which is not exactly one of my favorite places to go. Especially when I have... 40 levels. So maybe I'll find something to spend those 40 levels on. Because last time I was on at the end, I didn't survive the trip. And I figure if I'm going to get killed, I might as well at least spend the levels before I get killed and lose all my levels. So let's keep that in mind. So I have a lot of digging here first before I could start thinking about things like making trips to the end and finding chorus flowers and the like. And here you have it. And this room is huge. Looks so small on the map, but 
When you actually dig it out, it gets pretty big. And then there's the side room over here. A small, tiny passage that leads into here. And you have this room over here. But this one could use a little bit more breathing space on top. But I think that passage I'm going to leave constricted. They show it as 10 by 10 on the module map, but I think constriction really fits with what they're trying to do here. So I will keep that constricted. And there you have it. Now I just need to figure out how to get the end stone and coarse flowers in order to actually build the farm. Oh my, looks like Stina has been working on the hub a little bit. This glass to discourage mobs, I presume. And it's quite a pattern here. All the way through, obviously not done yet. But it looks like it won't be long before this is all complete. I wonder what she has in mind for the ceiling and walls. I presume it won't be long before I find out. I think I'll postpone going into the end and getting coarse flowers and start getting to work on the west tunnel. Which apparently has needed someone working on it because I just saw a wither skeleton, yeah. And if that's coming down the west corridor, is earlier I ran to a blaze going down here. Now I ran into a wither skeleton. So that's what we commonly find when we go down here. This place is going to be needing a great deal of work. So I think it's time for me to get cracking and take care of this west tunnel before somebody gets killed and knowing my history that someone could be me I must confess that I find this place to be a little bit on the creepy side especially when every once in a while I hear noises and see blazes which are probably connected with those noises I wonder if it's worth going after this. Oops! Ah, it's not worth going after it. <laughs> Good grief. Oh, there's a blaze rod there. Okay, I'll go after it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there blazes all over the place. I have to find some way in order to allow us access to the blaze farms, but to keep the blazes from invading our territory. Meanwhile though, I've covered up the ice with the floor. I'm planning on doing the floor first for this one. In the other two, I did the walls as I went along. But this place is so creepy that I just don't want to spend the time to do all the parts at the same time while I'm down in here. So, I'm just going to do this step by step. Take care of the floor first. She already has these stone slabs in there, so I'm just going to grab the stone slabs and use those. And pop those on like that. And do that. So therefore, actually, this tunnel looks like it's going to be the easiest from the point of view of distance. It only has 30 chunks as opposed to the uh, well over 100 in the north and 70-odd for the east. But it's very scary to do this one. I think that's the main challenge with this particular corridor. But I think from the point of view of floor surface, 
I don't think there, there are any gaps in the matter. It's a relatively short one. So I don't think it's going to take me as long as it took me to do the North. Oh, I hope it doesn't take me as long as it took me to do the North Corridor since that one took me two months. And I think I might even be able to get this one finished by the end of September or at least by mid-October. We'll see. Well, maybe there will be a few challenging points with the floor. <laughs> but at least I won't be going through thin air like it was on some other system. So therefore, not nearly as bad as the North Tunnel. Because believe me, I ran into some really, really tough sections on that one. And I think that's it for today. Between episodes, I will finish up this floor and take care of the ceiling and maybe even part of the walls. And we'll see how far I get before the next episode of Piney Plays Minecraft Wells Topia.